Hello everyone. Three men were marooned on a desert island. As the day slowly went by, they dreamed of what it would be like to be at home with their friends and family. One day they found a bottle. When they opened it, a genie popped out and said to them that she would grant each of them one wish. Oh, really? One of the men said, "Please make me go back to my wife and kids." The genie said, "Okay," and instantly he was gone. Seeing that, the second man gave his request, "I want to be back with my fiance." The genie said, "Okay," and in an instant he was gone too. The third man was left all alone sitting on the sandy beach. The genie asked him, "What is your wish?" He said, "It is so lonely here without my friends. Please bring them back here." Friends, it is said that human beings are never satisfied. We always want something more and something different. The very few people who are truly content with their present life The apostle Paul is one of the greatest examples for those who seek contentment. In his letter to the Philippians, he reminds all Christians that contentment is the key to true peace. Let us first briefly look at the surrounding circumstances of the letter. When Paul was a prisoner in Rome, he wrote four letters which are now part of the New Testament of the Bible. They are to the Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. While the first three letters were addressed to the churches he had founded, the last one was deeply a personal letter to his friend Philemon. Today's second reading is an excerpt from his letter to the church at Philippi. Philippi was an important ancient city in Macedonia. and it enjoyed a high degree of autonomy and tax exemption within the roman empire however the people began to worry about losing their privileged status after their conversion to christianity at the same time they were also quite concerned about paul's personal well-being while in prison hence they collected money and other material goods probably clothing and food and sent a leading member of the church Epaphroditus to visit Paul and deliver their gifts while in Rome Epaphroditus fell seriously ill and the people were worried about him as well after he recovered from his illness Paul sent him back to Philippi with a letter in the letter he expressed his immense gratitude to God and the church by thanking them for the generous gifts and drew their attention to the significance of suffering in the spreading of the gospel of Jesus and the peace and joy they could experience in spite of suffering last week we read a part of the letter in which paul exhorted them to stop worrying or being anxious instead he challenged them to offer their worries and fears with gratitude to God and obtain peace moreover he urged them to think about things that are true noble just pure honorable gracious and praiseworthy and follow his example so that the god of peace will be with them today's text is a continuation of last week's message in this text paul seems to emphasize that we cannot find true peace by just avoiding worries and anxieties and by focusing our thoughts on what is true noble pure and gracious but also by being content with our life he wrote i know how to live in humble circumstances i know also how to live with abundance in every circumstance in all things i have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry of living in abundance and of being in need i can do all things in him who strengthens me 
Friends, when we read these words, it becomes immediately clear to us that Paul knew what it was to be content. There is no doubt that Paul was a contented man. The word content comes from a Greek word atarkis, which means self-sufficient or independent or to be satisfied. At the time of Paul, some Greeks explained the word as the ability to free or detach oneself from all wants or needs and emotions or to be indifferent to the needs and pains of this life. But Paul's contentment was something more than physical or emotional and material. His contentment was spiritual in nature. For most of us, a sense of well-being comes when our life is just the way we want it. But that was not the case with Paul. He said that he learned to be content in every circumstance. It means that Paul was content not only when good and happy things happened, but also when he suffered. How was it possible? What was the secret to his contentment? Paul's secrets to contentment were 1. He found his hope, his confidence and sufficiency in the Lord. He said, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. His contentment came from his total submission to the Lord. He was fully confident that the Lord is in charge and would order the events to meet his needs. 2. He was grateful for the little he had. His need in prison was perhaps deep and great, but he did not show any discontent. He was satisfied with the gifts of the Philippians and humbly acknowledged their kindness and generosity. He said, It was kind of you to share in my distress. He was also at peace with the providence of God, that he expressed his gratitude, saying, To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. 3. He embraced all of life, the good and the bad, the joyful and the painful, riches and poverty, the holy and the not so holy. 4. He encouraged and prayed for others. He wrote, My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Friends, contentment is something all of us so desperately need in life. Most of us do not experience it to the degree that God desires us to. We live in a very discontent society. Many are more discontent than deprived people. Please ask yourself, can I say in whatsoever state I am today, I am content? Can I say that I am content no matter what the circumstances are? If you are truly content and as a result perfectly at peace, Give thanks to God. If you are discontent, then first, you need to be aware of four things. Unrealistic expectations, unfair comparisons, unnoticed blessings, and uncontrolled ambitions. Second, like the Apostle Paul, you can learn and practice the secret of being content by yielding to God's providence by humbly appreciating even the small things in life and thanking God and others, by embracing everything what life brings to us, and by encouraging and praying for the well-being of others. Finally, let us remember that we may have some peace with less or no worries and anxieties, and we may have little more peace because of our noble thoughts and good deeds, but we can find true peace only through the spiritual contentment. Amen. 
God bless you.